I'm Robbie Long of Earthbound Farms. Earthbound is probably most known for its size and our scale. We have 1,200 acres here and three other locations that are approximately the same size throughout the Salinas Valley and San Benito County. We're growing broccoli, romaine, a little bit of spring mix. First thing that comes to mind when I think about weeds is how am I going to get rid of them and what's it going to cost? My relationship with weeds on the farm is uh, something that is first, first and foremost at the top of the list of you know how how the ranch gets ma gets managed in all aspects, water, the tractor work that we do, weeding, manual hand weeding. It's it's right up at the top of the list. My biggest concern when there are weeds in the field is making sure that we take care of them before they go to seed that we're in early enough, kill them before, before they do set seed. If, the, if we run late, then it's a circumstance where we're, we'll pack weeds out to not leave them in the field once they do have seed. Just as a general practice, we, we try and keep our fields and our ranch as clean as possible. To describe my practice of weed management in one word, I would say uh, cultivating. The approach that I use for managing weeds is uh, starts before before planting. We'll we'll put at least one pre-irrigation on a field before we plant. If we have enough time in between rotations, sneak a second or a third one in there to try and germ as many weeds as we can. And then we'll go through with a perfecta. Or we've got a couple of implements that we use to go in, stir up the dirt, kill any weeds. Well, they're still small, so all you got to do is loosen them up a little bit and and they die off relatively easy, dry up, especially here with the wind. It makes it really easy if you expose the root to air. Uh, throughout, the, throughout the crop cycle, once the, like a field like romaine is established, we'll go in and, and cultivate it. And we'll, we go through pretty painstaking efforts to do it, go in and do a precise cultivating job. I mean, we're talking maximum two inches either side of the plant. That, that is not getting touched, everything else is getting stirred around pretty good. So, you know, I would figure we're getting at least 75, 80% kill just by cultivating. Anything that's left it is left in the seed line with the plant. Uh, when we go through and thin something like romaine or head lettuce, they're, they're thinning the plants, but they're also taking out weeds at the same time. So by the time we've done the first cultivation and gone through and thinned, we've done a, a lion's share of the work of weeding. Um, after that thinning stage, we'll do another cultivation just to go and stir it up again, get anything we might have missed the first time that, that didn't die. Um, at that point, let the crop sit for a while, water it again. After that following water is when I like to go in and weed, hoe. Um, they'll get whatever's left that you didn't get with your cultivating and, or thinning. and. Uh, Ideally, at that stage, they can get through pretty quick. I mean, you've done, you've done most of the work already. And by, by the time you're, you're harvesting, hopefully, you, you know, you see a straggler here and there that's poking up, but for the mo most part, you got a clean field. I think the conditions that we need to, to do what we want to do are, are timing is crucial in terms of uh, after your water, getting in at the appropriate time, Pre-irrigation wise, you, wanna, you don't want to get in too early. You want to give weeds that are there at the surface time to germinate, get, get, get gro growing, and then, then go in and wipe them out. In terms of cultivating, um, same thing with water. As, as soon as the field's dry, by the time you've got a stand, a good stand, and you put that last water on, by the time it's dry, it's, it's good to go in and, and, and hit it with the cultivator. You don't want to let it get too dry because then you end up getting clods. The, the roots of weeds will get attached in those clods. They won't break up, so they won't die. They'll just be stuck there in a clod. So we like to go in where it's still got a little bit of moisture. Everything works up real nice and soft and everything breaks down. I think purslane would be the most problematic. Um, if you don't take care of it while it's small, 
you can you can kill it you can cultivate it out but if you leave it there and it's big enough and you water again it never seems to die it just it'll reattach itself and go to seed so purslane is the main one that we try to uh, take a lot of care no matter what size it is when we're out doing our our hand weeding we always pack it out drop it at the edge of the field or try and have a trailer there to load up the trailer um, always with purslane because if you don't clean it up it just becomes a mess for for whatever you're doing um, nettles nettles are bad especially in spring mix I think there's a zero tolerance policy for nettles in something like spinach or a baby baby lettuce something that's getting packed into a bag nobody wants to bite into a, a stinging nettle for us, I think the biggest economic impact is, is having to do hand weeding in our spring mix. Um, we can range in a clean field, $100 an acre to weed, to here in Chular, which is new ranch for us, and uh, particularly weedy, we've had some hit close to $1,000 an acre. We had a, a field of red baby lettuce that at full stage growth, it's four to five inches tall and field should be red, purple. You go out and look at this thing and it's covered green with, with little malva to where you, you see more green than red. And you know, when you get to something like that, it's, it's a problem. We need to make a call like, hey, are, are we gonna weed this or are we gonna disc it? We went through and weeded it and it did end up costing around $1,000 an acre. It's, spring mix fields are generally small, so it's not like you're going out weeding 10 acres, something like that. Um, it's obviously, if you're, if you're paying that much to weed it, it's weedy, and if you're not weeding it, you're not gonna harvest it. So it's either you, you pay it, you suck it up and pay, or you don't harvest and you lose a field. I'd say the risks that we encounter uh, cultivating, you need to go in at the right size for the crop. If it's too small, um, you end up stirring a lot of dirt around while you're cultivating, so you could end up covering up a good portion of your plants if, if the cultivator man's not paying close attention, if your cultivator's not set up properly. You might have one knife digging a little deep and it's, it's kicking a wave of dirt over and, and he might not catch it. For some reason, it's just out of his view when he turns around in the tractor. He might cover up a, lot, you know, a whole pass, a line. You'd, you'd end up losing that line or he's gonna have to get out with a rake and uncover that pass. Um, I'd say that's that's a big danger. Uh, having having a good cultivator man is a, is a good plus. I mean, it's an important thing to have somebody that you can rely on to be out with plants that are they're small. I mean, they're tiny plants, and he's living within an inch and a half to two inches either side of them. Three three eighty inch beds, fifteen lines of romaine at one time. So he's a lot to pay attention to. So if you don't have an experienced man out there, yeah, it can be a little. A little nerve-wracking. The best lesson that I've learned in managing weeds is is to be on the ball, and and to be it's better to be early than late. Once once you're late, they're harder to kill. They're harder to pull up. They've gone to seed. If you get there and they're small, you can hoe them, leave them down in the furrow to dry out, and they're not going to bother anything. But once they've gone to seed, like I said, we like to. We like to clean our ranches up, so if, if they've gone to seed, we'll, we'll take the time and once they've gone through and with their hose, they'll come back with bags, pack everything out of the field, and you know we'll let it dry up or throw it away. We'll get rid of it somehow, burn it, whatever we can do to get rid of them. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to be early. I think the thing that keeps me farming is, is being out here, being outside in the valley, getting to come out here every day and see what you did the day before, how that turned out, um, see what you've done for the last two months uh, when you started a field, when they're out there harvesting, how, how it looks at harvesting, making sure that we've got a, a quality product and, a, and a, nice, a nice ranch that then when people come to the ranch, you know, they can tell they can tell that it's that it's our our group farming it